how many people are robbing Peter mm -hmm. to pay Paul? Mm -hmm. Right? How many people are not yep. paying taxes? Yep. Are during throughout the year so they can live, pay, so they can make ends meet, and then yep. at the end of the year they know I'm gonna owe all this money to taxes. I'm gonna owe yep. this. I'm gonna have to start an agreement plan or a payment yep. plan or something like that. Yep. But that's the reality that people face during this time. And like you said, it goes back to that fear of making a mistake, the complexity yeah. and the confusion. If I don't do this, I'm not gonna be able to feed my kids. I'm not gonna be able to feed myself, yep. right? It's, a, it's yeah. an unfortunate reality. Welcome back, folks. This is episode 12 of Safe Talk. We're talking about tax anxiety as we move into the tax season, as they change and update the brackets. But before that, what's up, Walt? How you doing, sir? Getting anxious just thinking about taxes. I know. Right? No, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm loving this series, this little mini series that we're doing on the tax brackets and tax anxiety. Yeah. I think it's something that's super important, especially in today's climate with inflation and yeah. rising costs, rising home costs, rising food costs. I know that things have been getting a little bit better yeah. here in the last oh. few months. I think that is important. It's an important subject to talk about. So I'm excited to get into it and have this safe space for us to agree, disagree, to yeah. work things out, you know? I, lo I, love, it. I love this show because, of, of course, folks, it's a safe talk. This is it's a safe place to talk. We, we, on our other shows, it's about payroll. We talked about how the tax brackets impact employ payroll professionals. Mm -hmm. We talked about, and it's about your paycheck, how the tax brackets impact us as individuals, as employees. And here is just, I want to just talk about why. Like, why does it get us anxious? And how can we combat that a little bit? The money, like my wife always is, oh, you get so tense when we talk money. And what I realized recently is that I start worrying about my future immediately. Oh, my gosh. Right. Because payroll folks, we're aging. We're aging folks. So it's not Asian, aging. <laughs> and most of us are over 40. That's another thing we're going to do this season is trying to get young people excited about payroll. But with that being said, it's, ooh, I get anxious because I'm thinking about the future. And blah. So I wanted to share a few things of why we get anxious, right? Like, why do we get anxious when we talk taxes? And now a word from our sponsor, Time Track Go. To celebrate Small Business Month, Time Track Go is offering you a chance to experience the power of their time clock software completely free for the first month. The Simply Better employee time clock software that is going to make your life easier. Time Track Go already has a unique graphical employee time card and that will help you quickly identify and fix the mistakes. Time Track Go just announced the addition of automatic PTO accrual earnings, so you can say goodbye to those manual calculations. And Time Track Go integrates with your favorite payroll systems, including QuickBooks, Gusto, ADP Workforce Now, Paychecks, and more. Don't miss out. Take advantage of this special offer Use the link in this post to start your 14-day trial in the month of May to qualify for your first month free. Let's go. Let's go. Because one is complex and confusing, right? Tax laws are just overwhelming. Two, yep. we, we have a fear of making a mistake. There's a common fear of making those errors that could lead to paying more taxes or worse we miss our payments and we're facing penalties and then nah, people threaten to get a uh, divorce. People threaten to get arrested and then nah, you're going to jail or whatever. They might get divorced too. They might so. get divorced. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny because my wife. I'm sick of you. <laughs> that, no, my wife said, look, you make me go broke, we are done. And I like, that, oh that's the God. deal breaker. This fear is intense when people are self-employed or you have multiple income sources. Mm -hmm. Remember we talked with Tabitha Brown, she said it gets overwhelming because of the multiple places money is coming from. Yeah. She's her own business now, she's self-employed. So she's getting different deals, does a million different things. So yeah, it's all great, but God, you have to keep it in track. Employees, we get lulled into this, oh, we get the check, we get the one check, we get the one check, we get the one check, it's easy. But mm -hmm. it gets a, more stressful for self-employed folks. And then another one is financial impact, right? Taxes have a direct impact on our money. So the possibility of owing is it can be anxiety, especially if you're already oh living God. paycheck to paycheck, right? And you're Man. not planning, 
Yeah. H- how many people are robbing Peter mm-hmm. to pay Paul? Mm-hmm. Right. How many people are not yep. paying taxes? Yep. Throughout the year, so Just they can live. Pay, so they can make ends meet and then yep. at the end of the year they know i'm gonna owe all this money to taxes i'm gonna yeah. owe this i'm gonna yeah. have to start an agreement plan or a payment yep. plan or something like that yep. but that's a reality that people face during this time and like you said it goes back to that fear of making a mistake the complexity yeah. and the confusion if i don't do it this way then i'm not gonna be able to feed my kids i'm not gonna be able to feed myself yep. right it's, a, yeah. it's an unfortunate reality yeah and another one, it's super time consuming, right? And the more st- different things you have going, the more paperwork you have to get involved in. Oh, I got to put all the documents together. I need this one. And did I get my 1095 yet? Did I get this yet? Did I get that yet? Oh, gosh. So it's time consuming. There's also privacy and security concerns. And, and I know I, I got this one. When I'm sharing my, oh, now when I'm sharing all these documents, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I get so nervous. What I do appreciate is that when the, whoever's your tax preparer, they have a secured share drive and you can upload it directly to mm-hmm. something instead of emailing your things across the world or whatever. Doesn't mean cross town. You, if as soon as it's on the internet, it's in the world. So that makes me nervous. I'm also an advocate of not doing mail w-2s like you should get your digital you should just log in and download it that in and of itself is dangerous because if you're on an internet connection that's not secure and it's more dangerous though for your w-2 to go out on paper and somebody sees it and they it's nothing to just grab it right if the some carrier or handlers or your mailboxes or whatever people do it's easy to just steal it every your whole identity is on this freaking w-2 man if you have a Think about it. If you have an unsecured connection or you your your connection, your internet, your yeah. web, your Wi Fi is oh, I gotta acceptable. Go public. I gotta go to the library to use it. No. Yes, go to go to a library. You're you're in a Starbucks, you're in a this and oh, that gosh, or whatever. No. Like yep. there's different people that are just waiting around. There's people one of the tactics, and I know this is a different show, but one of the tactics people use is that they have a little portable router that they take mm-hmm. to open spots mm-hmm. and they wait for people to connect and they name their router the same thing, like Starbucks guest. And you think wow. you're connected, you think you're connected to the actual restaurant or the actual establishment Wi-Fi, but nope, you're really on somebody's hotspot and they're tracking everything that you do. Yep. So I, I get the privacy and security concerns because that's a great never call know, out, man. They know it's not a different show. That's diff- this. That's every show we do. Cybersecurity is that's a really good call. out. I did not know folks did that. Thank you for that. It's probably on that list of 50 cybersecurity thing threats that we only got three into it. Yeah. But yeah, cybersecurity. Again, that's the point. The security of it all is like, what? And then the last thing with. The anxiety of it is past experiences. You didn't, if you didn't have a good experience with your last tax person. I remember one year I went to H and R Block, and I had to tell the person what to do, and I, I just got up and left. I was like, "Hey, you know what? We're done here. I'm good. I'm not. We're not doing this. You, you if I know that. more, really, if I know more than you, what you doing? Because folks, you got to be careful. A lot of these tax preparers, they just they usher them in during tax season. They don't have, they don't need prior knowledge. They teach you how to key buttons, ask questions, and hit the buttons, and poof, you're filed. Yep. No, I want a tax preparer that actually understands some code. You know what I mean? I had a great CPA, God rest his soul, that had this saying up, to evade mm-hmm. is illegal. To avoid is legal. And mm-hmm. what that meant is if you know what you qualify for, what your benefits are, and what your tax credits are and all mm-hmm. these things. If you know the code Man. and you know where you fit, yeah. you can apply it to your filing accordingly. Man, you got me feeling like I'm in church, man. Say that again. Say that one I more time. Know. To evade is <laughs> to to evade, what? To evade is illegal. To mm-hmm. avoid is legal. Mm-hmm. But that means just knowing the code, knowing yes. how to file, knowing all the things that are applicable to you. And it is complicated. We just talked about it on the other show. It's about your paycheck and it's about payroll. Go check those out. Those are free shows, right? God bless. Thank you folks for being on, on our safe talk and to our subscribers. We love you. We can still come in with the content for you, but go check out the free shows. Cause we're talking about the more 
detail stuff there. What's up? So going back into these past experiences, right? Like mm-hmm. I've heard stories of people t- trusting someone in their family or trusting someone they were referred to for to file their taxes, and this person stole their money. Oh no! I, I've heard stories of that. I'm sure you have too. Of where this person filed and said, "Oh, I'm going to get you a refund. The check is going to come to me, and then I'll release the payment to you." And this person just disappears. Wow. Like, like, how does this person disappear? Like, where did they go? Like, I've heard stories of that, of people getting taken advantage of. And so that makes people a little leery. Right? Yeah. That makes them, and see, and that causes, that, what that forces is that forces the individuals to go to a TurboTax or a Tax Act or one of these self-filing programs that yeah. are out there. And, and you still don't know, really don't know, it's even no. though they have breakdowns and explain everything to you. Nope. Honestly, some people really don't know. Okay, this thing is suggesting that I do this, then I'm going to okay. I'm gonna follow the suggestion. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Yeah. Nah. Make sure you make sure, like those past experiences, I think, really play into why there's so much anxiety around tax time because yep. there's some crazy stories out there, man, about yeah, how people no, have been it. impacted. Yeah, I, believe, I would say be careful with these pop ups, right? The, the storefront was empty a week ago, but now it's tax season and boom, it's a pop up tax preparer office. Yep. What? Where, where were you before? And, you know and, what I mean? And, and at the end of the day, the unfortunate thing is that the government was like, oh, I'm sorry that happened to you, but you still, still owe. owe. <laughs> still owe. That's right. You still owe on that. Yeah. No, it's it can be really yes, all that, all that, and and overall, it, it contributes to our anxiety. The combination of these financial implications, the need for it to be exact, the complexity of the laws, it stresses us out. Period. So, so Walt, on that note, what mm-hmm. can we do? To, to battle some of these anxieties and the stress of it all? As employees, these are just suggestions, but these things may help you along the path. You may consider doing all of them or some of them, depending on your tolerance or whatever you need, right? The first thing is, you know, tax season often brings waves of anxiety to us as employees. So what could you do? You can acknowledge that anxiety, you can acknowledge that stress and try to understand the underlying things of it all. Now that may seem like burdensome and a lot to do. So you may be able to do that or you may not be able to do that, but you can try to acknowledge it and say, okay, hey, I understand why I'm stressed. It's like almost like having self-awareness within yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And being able to realize. Yeah. Hey, no, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And so the next step is early planning and being organized yeah so procrastinating oh, and waiting to the yeah. yeah, waiting to the last minute yep. is only going to imp- uh amplify the or stress. increase that stress yeah. especially when it comes to taxes start early so that means start now, organizing yourself next early year. <laughs> yeah. yeah i remember my dad to his credit he used to have one of those not a rolodex but one of those accordion type file yeah. things yeah, yeah. that yep. stretch out and he would yeah. put things in there by alcohol order okay yeah. this is going under a b yep. c d like he used to have those things and prepare himself for those tax seasons so yep. like he had everything every receipt everything so he had it already organized so by the time the end of the year came i got all my stuff right here all you got to do is just hand it over to your tax repair or you just pull it you out when you're ready to file your taxes. Yeah. So early planning and being organized will help relieve some of that stress. Start early. Yeah. I tell so, myself that every year. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with it, but I still end up waiting to too long to I have a buck, two buckets of receipts that I got to go through and make and yeah. pick out the one. But I should be more intentional because I know which ones are going to impact me tax wise at the end of the year. So I need mm-hmm. to be like, maybe this year, I think I'm going to be more intentional as I save new receipts. But yeah, I'm a victim of this too. I wait too yeah. long and then it takes me like a whole day to and prepare. You're scrambling. Yeah. yeah. You're I got to take a day off. I literally, yeah. I think I have to get some PTO, take a day off. <laughs> I'm serious and get all my stuff because it's too much. Yeah. It's going to, it's too much. I waited too long. I don't want it to take away from my weekends. So think, think about it. If you have multiple accounts, multiple oh, streams of income, like you mentioned, multiple streams of income and mm-hmm. all these different things, it's mm-hmm. going to factor in. Hey, yeah. okay. That's just you as an individual. Imagine yeah. if you have family and dependents that you that, have to, yeah. you're responsible for. That's even side more stress. Business. You got a side yes. hustle and you're doing yes. this and that. Yes. Yeah. 
You got to have everything accounted for. Even if you're into sports betting as an employee, you have to pay taxes on those winnings. So you need to make sure you have good call out. Yes. So you have to pay taxes. So that's something to think about as well. You can report that on your taxes. If you're taking a loss, you can report that. So this is just a fun tip for you. Yep. So another thing is trusted professional guidance. I want to throw that word here. It just says seek professional guidance, but trusted professional guidance. So do your research, review and see, hey, what what has been people's experience using these people to file their taxes? So as we know, tax codes are intricate and navigating them can be overwhelming. So you, you can consider, you should consider getting the assistance of some trusted if you can afford it also that's the other thing i throw in there if you can afford it you know Mm -hmm. sometimes you can't not afford it like you can't afford not to do it but of course so and and it's it's, it may be a little bit it may be a little bit more expensive but it it may be well worth it so instead of you paying that sixty dollars that you pay by doing it yourself on tax act or turbo tax you may have to pay double or triple that yeah but yeah they know if those tax professionals are on their stuff, they know where to yep. get you more money and what to write off and stuff like that. Go ahead. And I give you a good, a, a personal advice is like a good one is going to take an hour or two to interview you mm-hmm. and understand your life and everything that impacts it. Because yeah. that is where you, that's the avoid part, right? Yes. What if you do something that, you have a credit for you don't even know you don't don't even even know know. so a good tax person is going to interview your life you may think it's evasive what are you asking me all these questions for because you could be contributing to the local this and oh that's a tax credit oh you have an elderly person that you care for in the house that's a tax credit you have a children your tax you don't know Mm -hmm. some people think that oh i just had a child 1231 guess what you can write them up it's a whole year now Yep. They don't know that. You don't even know. Oh, I, oh, I figured because it was 1231, they were born that I can't do it for this tax. No, you can. But that's what I'm saying. It, so get some like if they're really digging in, then, you know, they're good. There yes. should be a better sign of a, 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 a good sign. That's a good sign. That's a good flex. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Man, go ahead. No, you're good. Thank you, sir. The next one is utilizing technology. So there are yeah. numerous Yes. apps and online tools that yes. can simplify the tax filing process. Again, I mentioned some like TurboTax, Tax yep. Act. They, they can walk you through, but you should still do your research, right? Even, oh, even yeah. some employers provide electronic help, access yeah. to W-2 forms. But as you as an employee don't know, you have that capability and, and you, you prefer not getting it through the mail, but an electronic version. Your, your employer may have that option, mm-hmm. but you may not even know that as an employee then there's tax software that can guide individuals through the filing process helping eliminate errors and streamlining stream streamlining the process so you will definitely want to embrace technology to make the process more manageable it, it i will say i use a uh, turbo tax myself and it is easier to put your data in and so what TurboTax, they, you can put in, there's a number that's on your W-2 that you can enter and it will pull it, pull in the data and, and your inf- information. So you don't have to upload anything. You don't have to scan anything. So you're protected. Yeah. So the technology, it can work for you if you know how to use it. And it could also help you, like you mentioned in number in the first two, that you can mm-hmm. early planning. Right. Yeah. If you start scanning things in and budgeting and it starts putting it in the buckets that you needed to be in and mm-hmm. you get your write offs. Right. So folks who are preparing early and if you do write off instead of the standard deduction, we cover that in the other two shows. So go there. That could help you get organized. You could start accounting for it. And I, if I'm intentional this year, I won't end up with this. But my bucket is right over here. That's why I'm looking at it. <laughs> and I can scan things in and start accounting for it early so I can watch my stuff early on. So yeah, technology is good. Yep. And if used no, right. Yes, correct. Yeah. If used right. That's the big caveat there. So if the next one, you want to, you said it just now, you want to budget for those tax liabilities. So mm-hmm. say I may have a nine to five, but I do some side work and I have my yep. own business or yep. I'm a contractor. Yep. And I'm 1099. 1099 
employees or contractors, you're liable for your own taxes Mm -hmm. at the end of the year. So understanding that and planning for these tax liabilities throughout the year can help you mitigate that anxiety associated with your potential tax bill. Again, prepare, preparing yourself in early planning and organization throughout the year can help you do, do that. And if you do the math, it'll help you save accordingly. Yep. So like you want to prepare yourself and make sure that you're tracking that. If you are a 1099 contractor and you say, okay, I owe this much. The IRS has a nice tool out there, a tax calculator or estimator. And you can say, Hey, this is how much I've made as a 1099 employee. How much should I have to pay? There's, I know there's a percentage out there that you like to throw out there. What do you say? 30, 35%. Brian? For what? Uh, For paying taxes? Yes. Yeah, it's 25 to 35%. You can estimate that's what you're going to pay total, state, local, federal, that type of thing. So that's something that you can use. It's like that 25 to 35%. Like, that, but the, cat, another, the estimator is better. <laughs> the, esti- the, the estimator, estimator is better because yeah. it, it'll give you a, a more yeah. targeted um, number, right? Yeah. That you would have to do. So that's just something for you to utilize, and when it comes to budgeting for tax liabilities, yep. the next thing you want to do is you want to take advantage of deductions and credits. Yeah. Like familiarize yourself with any available deductions or credits that may reduce your tax liability. Uh, common deductions include those related to education home ownership and charitable contributions. So let's say you are a religious person, you go to church or you go to your mosque or whatever religion you're into and you pay contributions and you give to charity, whether that's your tithes or you're just giving a gift, those things can be considered charitable contributions. Yep. Right. And so you as an employee should know that you just bought a home. You may get some deductions or some credits you just, you're in school you may get some deductions and credits even if you have a nine to five but you're also going to school yep you may be oh yeah you may, you may be yeah. eligible for some of those things so take advantage of those things and that and like realizing that can help in some ways can help alleviate certain stress another big thing that we're really advocates of and we've all have been saying is practicing self-care yep give yourself some grace tax related anxiety can definitely and will definitely take a toll on your mental well-being. So practice some self-care techniques, such as exercise, being mindful, getting adequate sleep to manage that stress. Taking breaks during the tax prep process can help you maintain focus and prevent burnout. Because think about it, if you're scrambling at the last minute and you're all, and you're already in a heightened, yeah. anxious state, yeah. like that, you could miss something. I got to request my day off, man. I'm telling you, I'm not even playing. Because I don't want to be, I don't want to be this stressed out. If I have a day, if I have the day, then mm-hmm. it's like an eight hour period where I'm working yeah. anyway. It's I can, you know, I can just tackle it because I waited too long. You know what yep. I mean? No. Yep. And then the last tip to help uh, alleviate that can potentially help alleviate some anxiety and stress during tax time is communicating with your employers. So if you're uncertain or you have concerns that arise from tax related matters, if you don't know where to start, yeah. Yeah. Don't hesitate to communicate with your payroll team or your HR team at your employer. Employers may provide resources and clarification on company specific matter tax matters and offer some reassurance and support if, if you work for a company that has a good hr and or payroll team they should have some resources available now again i want to let you know that your payroll professional your average payroll professional should not be giving you legal tax advice on what no. you should file no they should guidance it. Yeah, they should guidance. guide you and point yeah. you in the right direction. Yeah. Hey, you may want to go yep. look over here. Like those signs that say, hey, the, this way. <laughs> yep. Follow the signs. <laughs> yeah, and it depends, right? If you have a good relationship with them and whatnot. Yeah, they're not going to give you advice, but the guidance may get better. Little yeah. pointers and tips like, you know, one of the things like when we fill out the W, the new W-4, it used to be easy, single, whatever. This mm-hmm. now... It's, oh, put $2,000 for every child you have. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what? Well, how many? What are... Folks get caught up there. 
And and so you got to multiply that for every child. And there's these new boxes that you got to check off. So you mm. can, again, I can't tell you what to put there, but look out for this, okay? People get yeah. tripped up on this part all the time. Look out for that. If you're listening to this and you're like, oh, that W4 stinks, check out our boy Gerard Hall, that payroll guy, thatpayrollguy.com. He built a spreadsheet to help you go through the process and you can mm-hmm. see your number change and you can see that it's a great tool yeah, it's and great. go check it out. And just, if you're having trouble, that is a, we've used it. Me and Walt took an hour one day and just walked through it yeah. and, and related it to what we saw and the pay. And I think we used like an, an employee, a random employee as an example to see, Oh, this is actually working. This yep. works. Mm-hmm. So we proved it out and it, it works. It's good. It's a good tool. Yep, it is. In conclusion, we're going to recap some of these bullet points and give you some of the key takeaways. So, Brian, yeah. in your opinion, what are some of the key takeaways from this? I think it's confusing. Be prepared. Prepare yourself for the complexity of it, right? It's going to be complex. We have, we're scared. There's a financial impact. It's time consuming. There's privacy concerns. And that you had a bad past experience, right? Mm-hmm. So just if it's too late for you now, like it is for me, I blew it. I'm done. Next year, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not only I'm going to, am I going to take time to deal with this year or rather the 23 tax filing, but now for next year, I'm going to be more mindful. I'm going to use some technology and get myself prepared in advance. Yes. Like again, so one of the key things for me is like you just said, like you just ended on start early. Yeah. Also educate yourself. Did yes. you know that? Yes, that the normal deadline to file is well, April, but you can request an extension through the IRS that you may be approved yep. to file later on in the year to give yourself more time to prep. Yep. So say, cause things happen in life, right? We get busy and we forget, you know how many people have reached out to me saying, man, I forgot that I have to, I got to file my taxes now. You can avoid that by educating yourself and knowing these different deadlines and these workarounds that you can like file later on in the year and be like, okay, I'm going to file in October instead of April. I give myself more time to collect all my data, get everything together, and then I can file for the prior year later on in this year, right? You want to make sure you budget for potential tax liabilities, if, especially if you do gig work or you're 1099 or self-employed and you need, want to make sure that you really watch those things so you don't end up owing or you break even at the end of the year, right? Know what works for you. Get trusted professional guidance and help on these things. And the most important thing is to not allow yourself to become burdened so much more than you have to. Take breaks. Yeah. Man, practice self-care. Give yourself some grace when it comes to these things and really just utilize technology. I, I've, I've known of some people, I've dealt with people in the past. They were like, I don't trust anybody to do my taxes for me. I don't trust no, I don't trust any technology or system right. or website to yeah. do it for me. I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. And if that's you. That's fine. Okay. Be educated but, though. Get educated. Be educated. Yeah. yeah. And prepare yourself. And make sure that you're taking advantage of any potential deductions and credits that are out there. And again, prepare early. I just want to call one thing out there for you said mm-hmm. uh, the, the extension, the filing extension. It Be careful because it's technically only t- the extension to file. If you know you pay every year, you're supposed to still pay on April 15th and then you mm-hmm. can file you have more time to file. Yes. So just be careful. If you get back money every year, then you should be safe. But again, educate yourself. If you're going to take yes. advantage of the, uh, the filing extension, just go right to the IRS. They define what you can do for the extension. I just went there to check it out. And because I remembered, I was like, wait a minute, I think it's just to file, not to pay. But if you pay, and it's true, and if you pay every year, then you're going to have to pay something. And then... <laughs> can file yeah yeah th- thank you for saying that i, I know yeah, i no said problem. i think i said file but i didn't include all the extra stuff yeah. so thank you mm-hmm. yeah no no problem yeah it's just this the, the well, while we're talking about it the things that make us anxious is just being educated i had somebody recently reach out to me and was like oh i want to be exempt and i was but 
IRS defines exemption very specifically. You qualified last, you got all your money back last year, and you expect the same scenario this year. Oh, yes. If you think about it, so there, there are some, they classify them as, so if you're a international person and yep. you came in and you have a work exemption and you may not have to pay certain taxes, yep. you want to make sure that you're set up correctly yes. on that because that can Absolutely. cause some Absolutely. different, that's part of the prep. Prep. Yep. yep. Students. We talked about yep. students real quick. Students have an exemption. If you're a full-time college student, there's an exemption. You're going to yep. get all your money back. And if you set it up right, you don't have to pay out the gate. Yep. Little things like that, folks, right? Again, those things makes us anxious. Let's, let's just let's get educated about it, get better about it. Reach out to us. If you have trouble, we can guide you and point you in the right direction. At some point, we, I want to get a tax professional come on and help us through these things. And But that if you know somebody good, let us know. We'll have them on. But yeah, folks. That is it for this week's safe talk as we prepare for tax season. Don't get too stressed out. Get prepared. I like that one. I think that's the biggest call out is get prepared, get educated, and really be proactive instead of letting it just come fall rain down on us like I did. Now I got to request a day off so I can deal with my taxes. (laughs) For real. For real. But all right. Until then, until the next time, folks, again, look out for this season in our ecosystem of shows we are this season we're talking about getting folks getting young folks excited about getting into payroll because we're aging we're an aging group and we really need some young folks to backfill payroll because if not what's going to happen so that's what we'll be talking about um throughout the season we're going to have some guests we're going to have some young payroll folks come on and tell us about being in payroll i want to get my daughter on talk about just the paycheck side of it, like the anxiety of, oh my gosh, I'm a new employee, right? So we're going to get all kind of different point of views and maybe that'll be a good safe talk to have them on. Um, My daughter and her girlfriend want to come on and talk to us Mm -hmm. about because they're brand new to the workforce. So we've been planning it, we've like been putting it off, but now it's perfect. This is the perfect season. This is what we're talking about. And yeah, just look out. We're going to have fun with it, man. Okay. Yep. Cool. To the next time, folks. Yep. We love you. Peace. Before we sign off, here are a couple quick things. Don't forget to follow It's About Payroll on LinkedIn and It's About Your Paycheck on Facebook and TikTok. Thank you for being part of our payroll community and thank you for being a part of this journey with us. Until the next time, keep learning, keep growing, and most importantly, keep going. Thank you for tuning in to It's About Payroll. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and most importantly, keep going.